Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here. I hope you're doing well, and if you're not, I hope you are soon. Okay, today on the Dungeon Dive, we are taking a little look at Escape from Stalingrad, a game from Raybox Games and designed by Marco Picotta. Uh, this game was recently delivered from Kickstarter, and I was a Kickstarter backer. Now, this is not a full review because I don't think I have played the game enough to give kind of a final thoughts, but I feel like I've played the game enough to let you guys know what I think of it so far. And I know right now, as of, what is it, uh, June 19th or so, uh, June 21st, somewhere around there, the 20th of June, um, there is a new Kickstarter for the next uh, for the next edition of this game, or the second part to this game, the follow-up. And I'm not remembering what it is called right now. I'll kind of put it up on the screen now, but it looks pretty cool. So Escape from Stalingrad is a tactical skirmish a, a, a narrative tactical skirmish game with a Weird War II theme. In this game, you are playing as German and Russian soldiers who are having to team up after the devastation in Stalingrad to fight against a new common threat, and that is the threat of the undead. So yes, this is a weird, a weird War II game with German and uh, Russian soldiers against zombies. Let's take a little look at the back of the box here. Stalingrad, winter 1942. Amid the bloodiest battle of the 20th century, the hungry dead have arisen. In a matter of days, two of the strongest armies the world has ever known are shattered, torn apart by an impartial, implacable foe. The corpse city on the Volga is cut off, occupied only by the undead and a rapidly dwindling number of living people. People who are no longer concerned about nationality or ideology, but only survival, survival and escape. So one of the things that I absolutely love about this game is the form factor. It is so nice to have so much game packed in this small box. Now, even if you thought this box was a little bit too big, you could actually also buy an even smaller version of this game, which comes in this kind of uh, deluxe deluxe box here and inside this file folder you will get everything you need to play you will get your rule book you will get your scenario and map book and you will get all of your tokens all of your flat tokens and all of the various other tokens that are off screen here maybe we can see those real quick all of these other tokens over here that everything you need to play the game you can get in this small file folder However, there's also this kind of medium uh, box here that you can get, this nice bookshelf size box. And it comes with all of your standees and some additional tokens. And then it also comes with these dual layer player boards for all of your soldier heroes that are going to be part of your group that are trying to survive. The file folder version, you will need to print out paper character sheets. So this is just a little bit of a deluxe version. Then there's also a super deluxe version that comes in two boxes, and that includes minis and some addition, I believe some additional other kind of 3D terrain components. But it's a really smart delivery for this game. I love it. I wish more games uh, like this came in uh, boxes this size. I love the scenario and map book. Right now, you are seeing the beginnings of Scenario 4 set up. We'll talk a little bit about that. But uh, the Scenario book, I believe there are over 50 different scenarios that you can play through. There are branching paths. There are different exits from the scenarios, and those might lead to different scenarios. Maybe you can uh, double back and try to complete scenarios that you skipped. But I believe there are about 50 scenarios. I'm not sure how many you go through for one full campaign. In addition to the scenario book, you will also have some narrative text to read that's in the rule book here and some additional scenario information in the rule book, usually for when you are setting up these kind of big kind of epic uh, boss fights. But in a game of Stalingrad, Escape from Stalingrad Z, you will start with only one character. So know that going in, I'm not sure if the new version will be like that as well, but if you bought this for uh, cooperative play, 
there might be one or two or three, a handful of adventures that you have to play solo before you are introduced to another character because the characters that will form your party are introduced to you as you are playing the game. You don't start off with a full party of four. So I started off as Till here. And right now, Till is armed with a knife and a Luger. I have some ammo and some food. And in the previous uh, scenario, I was able to rescue my second, my partner here. So uh, Till is German, but I was able to rescue uh, Katusha and she is a Soviet partisan. So now she has joined uh, my band of survivors. Throughout a campaign, you will get a total of four characters to be part of your crew. And those are the four characters that you have to go through the campaign with. If you ever lose those characters, you have lost the campaign. So I don't believe you get to use all eight characters. So you do have lives kind of like in a, a video game. And depending on the difficulty that you choose to play through the campaign, you will have a various, a various number of retries that you can do. There is not a fail forward mechanism in this campaign. If you fail a mission, you do have to retry it. If you retry it too many times, that is game over. That is campaign over. I think if I were to progress as I progress through the game, I will probably just push forward and keep track of how many times I had to restart and then, you know, just say, hey, you know, that was a really bad campaign. I had to restart 12 times because uh, I'm not very good at these games <laughs> of these kinds of games. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go. But I just love how much game is packed into this box. It's a great value, especially if you like the theme, especially if you like narrative kind of of these uh, tactical skirmish games. You just get a ton of stuff and a ton of cool things to do. Another thing that I really do enjoy is how well this game simulates that theme of being trapped in these small areas with zombies up against the wall, just scraping by trying to survive. The maps are all very small. The biggest map you will see will be a spread of two pages and that's it. And the mechanisms, the rules, uh, the way the game works does a great job of simulating these tight corridors, these uh, tight little battle areas. You're not in these wide open spaces. You are in corridors and you are in small office buildings and small little uh, compartmentalized warehouses. And so it really does feel like you have to watch every step you take because the battle area isn't very big. It feels like a claustrophobic zombie movie and you really do feel that pressure uh, while playing this game, I did feel kind of like I do when I play a game of Space Hulk, where you feel that tension every time you roll the dice, every time you move, there is that tension that, oh man, if something goes wrong, I am dead. And things can go wrong very, very quickly. And I think um, a lot of that has to do with the movement. And a lot of that has to do with, it's almost like a movement puzzle, this game, because the movement is very strict. You have to make very, very tight, critical kind of tactical decisions from one square to the next. Now, I am really bad at these kinds of tactical games. My brain just doesn't work in a tactical manner like this. My preference for a tactical game is something like Forbidden Psalm, which you don't really need to be very tactical in that game. You can kind of go in sword swinging, uh, you know, uh, guns blazing if you have guns, if you're, if you're playing the Weird War 2 version of, of Forbidden Psalm. But in this game, man, you really need to think about what you are doing. Time is critical because you can get overrun by zombies very quickly. Uh, there is a real sense of pressure. If you're not pushing forward, you are probably going to get overrun. If you have to start falling back, man, things can get out of hand so quickly and you can very, very quickly find yourself completely overwhelmed. And in that sense, I find the game really stressful. I would probably find it less stressful if I was just better at this kind of game. But uh, I wanted to take a chance on it and try something different. It's a little bit out of my wheelhouse, and I'm glad I did. I would love to see just a, a more uh, a more fun fantasy version of Escape from Stalingrad, kind of a dungeon crawl version of this game with this form factor and box size. That would be amazing. But here we have this setup. 
Now, uh, when you set up your scenario, you will have a certain number of characters that you can play. So right now I just have two. Those are the only two characters I have. Another really cool thing is as you get four characters, most of the missions in this game are only for two or three uh, heroes. And heroes that you don't field in that scenario are kind of, they're not, they don't just disappear. They are outside taking care of business on their own. And they can actually help prevent new zombies from spawning on the map. So that's kind of cool. You don't, uh, your, your, your character that you don't choose to take into battle still offers some kind of help. And I really do appreciate that as well. But you will be told to, uh, form a pool of zombie tokens. And these zombie tokens are kind of like the tokens in, in Space Hulk where they have the zombie on uh, one side and then a question mark on the other. So you may not be sure what you are drawing. Uh, also kind of like uh, Here's Negan, uh, the Walking Dead Here's Negan game, which is a game that I also really like, a zombie game that I love. We have a few different kinds of zombies here. Let's see, we can take a look in the book. Another thing that's really nice about this game is, is the art. The art's uh, pretty great. So we have, I think, about five different kinds of zombies. We have betas, and those are just really simple. They move once. If they have a movement left, they are, if they start their turn next to a hero, they will attack them. They have one health. We have armored zombies, and the armored zombies are the same as the betas, but they can't be stunned. And then we have the kugelfish, and uh, these guys are pretty gross. When you hit them, they don't get stunned, or or they don't. And but when they die, they also explode into a. Uh, a puff of, uh, of toxic gas. And then we have these alphas here and the alphas make all the other zombies more powerful and they have a two movement and two health. Man, having zombies that can move twice on this small battlefield is really, really dangerous. And then we have the alpha primes and the omegas. And I believe there are a couple super powerful and different zombies that you might encounter during, uh, during the campaign. So... There are some surprises in the campaign, and from what I have seen, the mission objectives seem to change a lot, and things seem to kind of evolve and get more complex with more moving pieces as you play. The first couple scenarios are pretty basic, but you're going to uh, create your zombie pool from the tokens that it mentions above, and you're going to mix those up. And then in this particular scenario a few zombies start off start off on the board so my characters are here this is called the stash and i'm trying to find my hidden stash because i'm trying to find my main character's preferred weapon and in this case it's an axe so uh till here is better at melee combat so that's what i'm trying to find and you can go through the map and on these blue tokens you can search those tokens and when you search the token you will roll a d12 that's another thing that the box set comes with is it comes with dice. So you, you get three D12 and you get these D6 that you can use for status markers. So you can use it when they're locked in hand to hand combat. You can use it for when they're on Overwatch. You can use these for when they have taken a uh, their their attack action. But in this particular map, we are told to draw three zombie tokens and put those out on the Z uh, spots on this map here. Now, because one of these spawned in the same room with line of sight to my characters, then we will reveal that and it is a beta. So we'll take a beta zombie and put uh, it there. And then the other two, those are off, um, those are out of my line of fire or line of sight. And so those aren't revealed yet. Then a typical turn would be you roll for initiative. The zombies are usually at a minus four. So the black die will be the zombies. So we got four to eight. Okay, so uh, the heroes get to go first, my soldiers get to go first, and then you would take turns. And basically what you want to do is the first thing on your turn is you can play any soldier you want. Uh, you can, they can go in any order. And the first thing you wanna do is decide if, if they are uh, staying stationary, if they are moving normal, which is four, or if they are moving quickly, which is eight. And depending on what you do, that can add uh, certain bonuses or penalties to your attack. Uh, movement is a very, very strict in this game. And that's where the kind of puzzle element and the stress comes from. Because when you move, you have to, uh, when you change facing, that counts as a point of movement. When you move backwards, that counts as two points of movement. When you move diagonally, that counts as two points of movement. And a general normal move, you only get four points of movement. So you can't do a lot. 
And I think that's to simulate these kind of this small little area with a lot of rubble around. It's hard to move. It's dark. Uh, this, these places have been bombarded with bombs and bullets and shells and mines and all kinds of things. So these are uh, the places where you are adventuring in this game are quite deadly and they're hard to maneuver. And so I think that kind of tight movement really does simulate that. But as an example, if I wanted to move tail four, I can, I wanted to get him out of one of these doors, maybe to get over here to search or maybe over here to search, I would go one, two, three, and then I could spend one point to open a door. So that's it, that, that's his movement. That would be his turn. Now he's facing in this direction. I can only shoot or attack in this arc, so I couldn't attack the beta here. But because I moved and I didn't take my attack action, then I could go on Overwatch. And I can't remember what they could, they call it cover fire. And if you don't, um, if you're stationary, you get a, uh, a penalty of zero to your Overwatch. If you have moved at, in the minimum movement, you get a penalty of two to your Overwatch. And if you move quickly, you get a penalty of four to your Overwatch. So then you can take one of these tokens or one of your D6 if you have the box set. And you can put that there as a reminder that he has not attacked yet and he has a two left on his overwatch for if he needs to attack something that is approaching him. And then it would be Katyusha's turn here. Uh, I think she would take a shot at the beta with her gun. So I would use my attack action. You only get one attack action and you have a better chance of stunning zombies than you do to kill them. However, once a zombie is stunned, if you can follow up with another character's attack, then that attack has a, a bonus to killing the zombie. So it's really crucial to have your characters work together, to have like your first character do the stunning and then your second character do the killing. Or if you have a gun that has a rate of fire of more than one, then that means you can have more than one uh, fire. You can have more than one attack, basically. And in this game, you do each uh, die roll for the attack in order. You don't roll. If I had an attack value of three, I wouldn't roll all three dice at one time. I would do one attack look at the results, then do a follow-up attack, look at the results, and then a third attack and look at the results. And that's really important to do that in that order because you usually want to, you will have a better chance of first stunning the zombies and then killing them. So again, it's a very tactical game. It's on the map. Everything is really confined and claustrophobic and it simulates that kind of cinematic feel, but the games do play quickly. You can play through a number of scenarios in uh, a couple hours or so. But uh, the game for me is quite challenging. Uh, both of my characters have already taken a point of damage and it's pretty hard to heal in this game. You can only heal if you have med packs and I don't have any med packs. Uh, luckily in this scenario here in Stash, you can get some med packs and that's one of the reasons why I chose to do this scenario. And again, I can also find my character's uh, main weapon. But there are some other uh, in intricacies to the rules as well. You have grenades and grenades are a little difficult. They're, that's probably the most fiddly part of the game is determining what happens when you throw a grenade. It's not just a simple area of attack. You take the uh, point where you threw your grenade and then that point becomes the target. And then each space outside of that target, it becomes harder and harder to harm or to wound or to stun a zombie. So it when you think about it conceptually, it kind of makes sense. But um, let's thumb through the, the scenarios real quick so you can kind of see some of the other battlefields. As you can see, things do change up. There are special rules for the scenario, for the terrain involved in the scenario, which is cool. So this one has like a fountain there. Um, here we are in the streets. The Grinser, the blocking detachment. Man, this looks like a real, really tight little kind of dungeon crawl there. Man, I do not want to, not looking forward to that. The Devil's Garden, fire and ice. Yeah, so there's fire and fire can spread. Uh, here we have an, a, a lots of ways to search here. So we have a scavenging. So this is a scavenging mission. And uh, you, there will be different points where you can scavenge and have these different lookup charts there. So there are, and this is this is here, this is as big as a battlefield will get two maps next to each other. And the rules for this are actually in the uh, in the rule book here. So overall, I think this is a pretty great value, especially if you like these kinds of games. For me personally, I'm finding it really difficult just because I am terrible at these kinds of games. There are a few things that I am a little disappointed in. 
Uh, one is the, the rule book itself is it, it's it's well written, but there are some mistakes and there are some things missing. Now, the creator has made an excellent how to play video on YouTube, and it's about an hour long. Now, if you just search for how to play Escape from Scott Stalingrad Z, how to play, it's there. It's in great detail, and it was made after the rule book was published. So it addresses any errata and any mistakes. So I do recommend watching that video in tandem with reading the book and you should be good. There are a lot of little fiddly rules, a lot of exceptions to the rules, things you have to remember that are different with grenade attacks uh, versus gun attacks, uh, the different ways the zombie moves as compared to the different ways that the soldiers move. So th there's a lot of fiddly bits, but I don't think it's too difficult and there is also a really nice set of errata already up on BGG and an FAQ, and these are both official. So I think the, the designer is definitely uh, addressing any issues that are present in the rulebook. Another thing that I'm a little disappointed in is the characters themselves. They really don't have many differences. While you do have eight characters at the beginning of the game, all eight characters are pretty much the same. Uh, one difference might be is they might have different things that happen to them as they take fatigue and fatigue is just them getting worn out as they are um, as they are, are going from one mission to the next. You want to rest your characters in between missions. So don't always use the same characters once you get four. Um, it's really hard to heal their characters. So keep in mind that all the characters only have uh, four hit points and then they are dead. And man, it is easy to get wounds in this game. But the characters don't really have anything that makes them different until you start getting experience. And as you, when you kill a zombie, you get a point of experience and then you can spend those experience points to unlock abilities. Now, all of the characters have the exact same uh, starting skill and that is a bonus to their preferred weapon. So even at 10 experience points, the characters are still basically going to feel the same. They don't start to get a lot different until you start reaching 35 and 90 HP. Uh, the characters, whenever they are introduced, they start off with nothing. They are survivors. They don't have weapons. They don't have gear. So a new character is really just a, a blank slate and they're not going to be very exciting. I would have liked to have seen each of the characters either start with a, a cool weapon or start with some skill that they could add to, um, to the party. Something to differentiate them from the other soldiers. But I guess that makes sense because these aren't fantasy characters. These are just human beings. So it kind of makes sense that the uh, characters would be, uh, would be similar. Um, another thing is, is, is no, if you are getting this, I already mentioned this, but I, I, it bears, uh, it's worth repeating, I should say, that if you are getting this for co-op, know that there are a f a, at least a few missions where you only have access to one character. And so you won't be able to play co-op, you know, straight out of the box. And also know that there are quite a few missions where you only have access to three heroes. And so one, one player might need to play, um, two and another might need to play a, a single character. Uh, so that is another thing to, to, to uh, keep in mind. One final thing to keep in mind is you could have a perfectly well played, uh, well thought out plan. But man, if you just botch your role, that plan is gone. And one botched attack role can can just cause absolute devastation on the battlefield. I've <laughs> I mean, you said, OK, I need to kill this zombie. And so I need uh, I need a, a nine or higher on a D12 and that's really hard to hit. And, and a lot of the weapons do kill on a nine. They might stun on a six, but they kill on a nine. And that's not very good chance of, of killing that zombie. And so you really do need to think about how you are moving, how you are using your attacks, how you are positioning your, yourself, how the, the different characters are covering each other. So if you are good at these kinds of uh, tactical skirmish games, these kinds of games that use uh, movement as a has a, have a tight economy of movement, you will probably fare better than I do um, than I did when I played. For me personally, because I'm not used to these kinds of games, because I'm not very good at them, 
I found it difficult. I found myself relying on luck too much. It's kind of like with a, a game of ghost stories. You know, the designer said, if you are if you are relying on the dice to do what you need to do, you're probably playing wrong. And I could see that same kind of sentiment applying to Escape from Stalingrad Z. But overall, I recommend this game to people who like narrative skirmish games, who like games that have a lot of tight tactical decisions to be made, and people who maybe want to try something different and want a low barrier of entry into maybe a new kind of game that they aren't used to. Because the game itself, I think the core box here was around $50, I think. And I think the second version that's coming out is around that same price between $50 and $60. So I think that's a pretty good price for what you get. And it's a great introduction to this kind of small scale tactical skirmish game. And I love that it just comes with everything you need in this small box. You can play on a small table and you can have a great kind of tactical skirmish time without a lot of stuff uh, that you need to store, a lot of terrain and minis and all of that. So, all right, you guys, well, hope you enjoyed this look at Escape from Stalin Grad Z. Let me know if you're enjoying the game, if you purchased it. I know it was a pretty, pretty popular game on Kickstarter when it, when it came out. And we will talk to you later. Bye-bye.